So yeah, I'm uh, here on site. Sorry, the room's a bit echoey, and uh, it's a bit like being back in the workshop. To be honest, it's it's so dark. There's almost no space. Uh, but anyway, first thing, first thing we're going to do is get the plinth in. Uh, there's a little, slightly annoying capping piece, little quarter rail plastic over the laminate floor. So I've got to cut that out first. Get the plinth in, uh, nice and level, and we can take the rest from there. <laughs> I'm using a multi-tool to nibble away the trim from the skirting or baseboard, then levelling up our plinth on wooden wedges before securing it to the floor with little wooden feet and small metal brackets. So normally when it comes to fitting cabinets, uh, electrical outlets and that sort of thing are almost always at the back. Um, so I, you know, if you've seen the other videos, I'll leave the back off and I put a piece of translucent corex um, on there uh, and then I can mark it through. Well obviously I can't do this with the side but what I have done is I've made up a, a false side if you like so that that's exactly the same depth as the cabinet. So what I can do is move that out of the way With the carcass moved to one side, I can mark the socket outlet position with a sharpie, then transfer this to the side of the carcass and make the cutout with a multi-tool. So the other thing I'm going to do here quickly is, uh, because this is just a, a, a pretty much a straight <laughs> scribe, it's nothing terribly complicated, I'm just going to fit this now before the cabinets go in. Um, and then I'll just plane, plane this back easily. With access this easy, it's a simple job to plane the fascia to fit, and fix it in place with headless pins. Then with the socket faceplate loosened, we can offer up the cabinet and feed the socket through our cutout. And with that fiddly bit out of the way, it's an easy job to bring in the other cabinets, line them up and fix them together with the usual hidden screw behind the hinge plates. Then fix each to the plinth with the lost tight screws through the base. And with the cabinets fixed, we can hang the doors, spending a little time to get them lining up nice and even. So sorry everyone, it's really hard to see what's going on here. I know the light's terrible and jammed up into a corner. But basically this is the end panel. I've nibbled away a little bit of the, um, uh, of the base just to fit around the architra the skirting baseboard so we can get this as far back as possible. Uh, I've checked at the front to make sure that this overhang is even and I've got a couple of um, pieces of MDF set to the right depth. And all we do, I'm just going to pop a couple of clamps on here just to make sure nothing moves. So we run this down the wall like so. I've got a slight overhang at the top here as well, so I'm going to just trim that off with a track saw. With our scribe line marked, I can add in the skirting profile with my gauge, then take it outside to trim everything back to the cut line using a jigsaw for the twiddly bits around the skirting profile. Back inside, I can offer this up as a dry fit, then add plenty of grab adhesive, a few pins and some clamps and leave this to set. Okay, so the end panel is the relatively Simple little bit of scribing out of the way. Now the next job to do is to scribe the top 
Um, so you obviously you do it to length first and then back against the wall. So let's see how we get on with that. First job is to get it in there without knocking you over. No promises. A little block of wood under here. Can you just get a feel for it's about the right amount of overhang you want over this lip? You don't want it to be this long, yeah? With the overhang decided, I can use the block of wood to scribe the line against the wall. Then take this outside and make the cut, using the block lane to finish off as close to the line as possible. Back inside, we can offer up the top, and once happy, scribe to the back wall with the same combination of track saw and block plane to get a good fit. And lastly, we can fix the top to the cabinets with screws driven through the front and back rails. With the cabinets and top firmly fixed, I can start to get the bookshelves in place, and this is one time when I'd really rather not be working on my own. But if the ancient Egyptians could probably have figured it out, then so can I. Note that I'm using a dust sheet to protect the painted top whilst sliding the shelves into position, and yes, well spotted, there is something screwy about that back wall. With both shelf units in place and spaced with a gauge, I can fix a couple of corner plates to the back of the wide centre shelves The tall units are already done, before covering the sides with glue and enlisting the help of a colleague to lift the gluey mess into position. Then quickly clamping the uprights together before the glue has a chance to go off. Good job. Wow. Thank you. It's okay. Your work here is done. Yeah, right. That's right. Oh boy. It was recording, wasn't it? It was recording. <laughs> <laughs> With the clamps still in place, the electrical connections are made and the lights tested. Result! Then the shelves can be drilled through to the wall, plugged and screwed, and a dab of filler over the screw head to finish things off. Now we can fix the shelf uprights to the top, simply drilling at an angle and driving home some tongue-tight screws, before gluing some ears to the side of the right-hand side shelves to pin the infill onto, wedging them in place while the glue sets. With the clamps off, we can scrape the joins of any excess glue. Then set about covering the raw edges, starting with the top pelmet, moving on to the side infill, then the shelf uprights, and finally the wide centre shelves, before treating all the joins to a dab of squeezy filler. Now you're smart and intelligent and observant, so I won't have escaped your attention that there's a bit of a howling gap down here. Um, problem with this has been that the wall, as it goes up, comes out. So you can only get the bookcases back so far and I've sort of fudged and fiddled it a little bit. Uh, but really, all you can do is fit a little sort of capping piece and that's what I'm doing here. I've tied a little thin 5mm strip of uh, flat and D. And that's just going to go into there. Just to cover that gap. There's going to be a TV in here so you won't really see it around the back there. But just to keep it tidy. We just pop a couple of bits in like this. 
With the infills complete, I can cut the cable access hole using a dust sheet to contain the spread of dust, then cleaning up and putting a simple cable tidy. With the worst of the messy work done, I can fit the doorknobs, run a bead of cork around the edges, and then give everything another quick coat of paint. With everything touch dry, I can start adding the adjustable shelves to the tall units, and then fitting the shelves to the base cabinets. And that's it for this week's video series. Uh, while I was recording this outro, there was a playdate happening involving half a dozen seven-year-olds, so you'll have to make do with this voiceover, I'm afraid. Uh, this job's been quite a lot of work and has given me a lot to think about, but the end result is exactly what the client wanted. Cabinets for storage, shelves for books and art, and space for the TV. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found it interesting. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and do share it freely. But that's all for this week. I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.